After years of talks, July 7, 2019 marks the date when 54 African countries signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, effectively making Africa the world's largest free trade area by number of countries since the formation of the World Trade Organization. The goal of this was to establish a single continent-wide market for goods and services across 54 countries, allowing the free trade of movement of business travelers and investments and spur economic growth and development, similar to how the European Union created a single market out of many different individual states. By increasing regional trade, lowering trade costs, and streamlining border procedures, full implementation of the pact would be a huge step forward for Africa, demonstrating to the world that it is emerging as a leader in global trade. And so, what if this giant African market gives rise to a new country? a fusion of all 54 countries into one massive unpartitioned state called the United States of Africa. The United States of Africa, or USA in short, would form out of 54 sovereign countries, which together cover 6% of Earth's total surface and 20% of its land. As a single country, the United States of Africa would cover a gigantuan area of 30 million square kilometers, definitively making it by far the biggest country in the world, three times the size of Canada, the US and China, and 70% of all of Asia. The total population here would be 1.3 billion, meaning the United States of Africa would come out as only the third most populated country in the world, still behind China and India. Currently, the planet's population is 7.5 billion and growing every year. By 2050, it is estimated to be close to 10 billion. This population boom will be dominated by the United States of Africa, which would be the youngest country on Earth with a median age of about 19.7 years. In other words, if you lined up everyone in the United States of Africa by age, the people in the middle would only be 19 years, a whole decade younger than the global average of 30.4 years. As a point of comparison, that is much younger than Germany's 47.1 years or Japan's 47.3 years. Official UN estimates put Africa's population at a massive 4.4 billion people by the end of the century. Staying on population, the most populated city within the United States of Africa would be a mega city called Lagos, currently located in Nigeria, which is the biggest city in all of Africa with a population of over 20 million people. For some comparison, Tokyo, the largest sprawling megacity in the world, has over 37 million, and New York, the largest city in the United States, has a smaller population of just barely 19 million. The best European comparison would be to say bigger than Istanbul, Turkey, and way bigger than London. Other big cities in the United States of Africa would be the Egyptian city of Cairo with a population of over 18 million, which is bigger than Los Angeles in the US and roughly the same size as Osaka in Japan, and Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo with a population of 14.3 million, comparable to Moscow in Russia or Sao Paulo in Brazil. Despite their size and population booms, none of these countries would be the proposed capital of the United States of Africa. That privilege would be bestowed upon the city of Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. The city gained international significance as the headquarters of the African Union, where African heads of states currently hold meetings. However, you see, this city holds a lot of historical significance. 
Unlike many other African capitals, the founding, growth and development of the city are not rooted in colonization, since the country successfully fought off Italians whose efforts to become their colonial masters were rendered futile. The outcome of the Ethiopia-Italian War ensured Ethiopia's independence, making it one of only two African countries never to be colonized and turned Ethiopia into a symbol of freedom for black people globally. The United States of Africa would also adopt a single currency. This step resembles the process of European integration and the agreements worked out there. By 1999, many countries joined the European Union and the link between the economies was strengthened by creating a common currency, the euro. Similarly, Africa's single currency would facilitate trade, lower transaction costs and facilitate payments for a combined economy with a gross domestic product of 2.5 trillion US dollars. This would make it only the seventh largest economy in the world, barely beating out Brazil's economy, but remain behind those of France, United Kingdom, India, and Germany. The GDP per capita of the United States of Africa would only be $1,997 per year, placing it just above Honduras and Nicaragua and firmly in the low middle income economy bracket. Africa is considered to be the most linguistically and ethnically diverse continent on the planet, with estimates putting the number of languages spoken at as many as 3,000 languages, challenging even the largest translation companies to get to grips with all of them. The most common languages are Arabic, spoken by about 17% of the population, mostly in North Africa, Swahili by about 10%, Berber by 5%, and Hausa by another 5%. English, French, and Portuguese are very common, where English is understood by 13% of the population, French close behind at 11.5%, and Portuguese by 3%. This extreme diversity could be a challenge for a united Africa if it did in fact unite and could potentially pose a greater threat to a sustained unity when considering the viability of a potential united country. Religion is always a major aspect and for many parts of the world, a dominant religion is necessary for peace and unification. Christians and Muslims would be almost perfectly divided, with each faith claiming about 47% of the continent's population. Traditional African religions would represent about 5% of the population. Christians and Muslims have a long history of conflict with each other, and as a result, Countries that have significant numbers of both Christians and Muslims have a greater difficulty in maintaining peace and unity. Take a look at this map showing the ratio of Christians to Muslims in Africa. Muslims dominate the North, while Christians dominate Sub-Saharan Africa. Conflicts that have a religious dimension are becoming more common worldwide, and Africa is no exception. However, Religion is only one aspect of these conflicts. They can also be ethnic conflicts or conflicts over power or resources. There is no conflict based purely on religion. Basically, one must distinguish between two types of religious conflicts. In interreligious conflicts, the conflict parties differ in the religious groups. This can overlap with ethnic identities and it is clear that heterogeneous societies are more vulnerable to triggering conflicts along these lines. This is different from theological conflicts, which are mostly about religious ideas. For example, radical Muslim groups demand the introduction of strict Sharia law in their areas of influence. Extreme religious and ethnic diversity would pose a challenge in creating a unified Africa where peace could be achieved. At first, it may not seem so, 
but climate and geography would also play a major role in a unified Africa. If you look at every map, Africa is taller than it is wide, something which has created small but diverse climate zones, creating different cultures throughout the continent. Go to areas where a desert climate prevails, for instance, the Sahara Desert, and you will find less of a cultural tendency towards establishing permanent homesteads, farming the land, and accumulating lots of possessions. Here, the climate does not support that sort of fixed location culture, and you may find a more nomadic lifestyle prevailing. The same climate type means a similar culture can develop and would be a path of most resistance to have people from different cultures get along and coexist with a stronger identity. There is so much more that goes into uniting people to form a country, and we'll just have to wait and see if implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will make the United States of Africa a reality. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please subscribe if you did and give me a like if you want to see more videos like this. I'll see you in one week with another Reason Africa video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.